My name is Tim Chambers, and I wanted to start by giving you a little bit of a background on where I come from and kind of where I'm at now, and then give you an overview of the, the mobile space from my point of view, and specifically the, the ways where this can be tapped for social outreach, for cause outreach, for political outreach. So my background is, uh, before my current scenario, which I'll describe in a minute, uh, I worked at Sony for approximately 15 years, so quite an arc. Um, I began at Sony Pictures, where I built out Sony Pictures Mobile, which went from th basically three of us to a couple hundred people and was a very major uh, business division within Sony. And then I spent four years um, at the Sony corporate level working for the chief technology officer for Sony. So um, in terms of advanced media and advanced technology, I had a, I had a good uh, run there and, um, and very much working on what is coming next. What is happening within the next 24 months that matters to consumers? What's coming in the next 24 months that uh, will make a difference in how people live their lives. Um, recently, I've moved from this, from that position to asking those very same questions about the political sphere. Um, I've, I have formed with a, a partner of mine who is the head of, di of digital for AOL Time Warner, uh, a new company that, is mer that has created a joint venture with Dewey Square Group called Dewey Digital. It's a brand new arm that is sort of the digital arm of all things Dewey. And we are working on, on answering those questions. How can we take what is occurring already in the marketplace that's already things that consumers are being habitualized to, that is already becoming a mass medium, but has not yet been tapped in politics or in, in, in issue advocacy, and how can, we, how can we begin learning in that space and begin acting on that space? We're all about very practical, actionable things that we can do. And um, I guess I would also say in introdu introducing myself that I'm an NPI fellow. And approximately a year ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, while I was still at Sony, uh, I wrote a white paper that you can get from the NPI website. So I would recommend going and grabbing that. And that was, that's a good counterpart to what I'm talking about today. Um, that, was, that was specifically targeting mobile media, and it is two years old, so on the internet that makes it ancient. Um, but most of, the, most of the metrics and most of the uh, observations in that white paper still hold true. And, um, and, and I would just recommend that. It's, it's on newpolitics.net. Um, and here we go. So quick, I'd like to do a quick barometer in the room, just raising hands. I'm assuming this crowd has probably 100% of you have some form of cell phone. But let's say, how many of you have used text messaging in the last month? OK. How many of you have used? Uh, photo imagery or taken photos or shared photos from your phone. Okay. Uh, played a game or downloaded a game. There we go. Okay. So, so this is a crowd that's already good and, and, and actually this average in this room is pretty close to the average in America. Uh, but you are already, and America already, are consumers of mobile media. I'd like to begin with two quotes as I talk about mobile media and define mobile media. And I'll end on two quotes. Here's the first one. In the US, the politics, the party that most quickly absorbs the latest technology often dominates. FDR dominated radio and the fireside chat. JFK televised debates. And the technology model coming next will revolve around the power of networks. The public official or candidate who no longer will just be the one who talks to the many or tries to listen or tries to listen to the many, rather he or she will be the hub of connectivity for the many to work with the many, creating networks of public advocates and identi to identify and solve problems and get behind politicians who get it. It was a quote from Thomas Friedman. And the second quote, which this came from the International Herald Tribune. If television helped bring down the Berlin Wall and fax machines helped protesters organize during the Tiananmen Square protests, then cell phones Cell phone text messaging, also known as SMS, may be the new political tool for activists. Text messaging has been fermenting what many experts are calling mobile democracy. And, th and the sort of question that we're talking about today and that we spend a lot of time thinking about at Dewey Digital is what's coming next that will matter? So if you look at new media and politics, you had the printing press, radio, TV, cable, faxes, the internet, and what's following? We propose one of the big key things that we'll be following is mobile media. And you'll often hear mobile used interchangeably with a lot of other terms, oftentimes with text messaging. And text messaging certainly is the most visible 
most uh, mass adopted form of mobile media. But it's a lot more than that. Uh, the first definition we'd give is the mobile media is everything that you consume on a phone that isn't voice. And that may be a slightly artificial term as you start seeing things like Skype and other voice over IP applications happening. But let's use it for now. It's got some uh, benefit in understanding what, that, uh, what, mobile, what mobile media can entail. And in essence, some good examples are ringtones, wallpaper, games, music, messaging, image, apps, and video. Something a large portion of this crowd today said that you'd consumed on the, within the last month. It is a huge business and growing dramatically. So the, in the US, um, as of basically this last year, uh, it was a $23.2 billion business. And when you look at who is consuming mobile media, it is not purely those under 18, although that's the stereotype and there is truth that causes, there's some truth behind that stereotype. Um, you can see that, that it arcs um, young, but not only. And there's respectable uptake across all the demographic groups. And I'll come later to start breaking that down ethnographically. And when you look at text messaging, the most uh, widely adopted of the mobile media, you can see over 48 billion, 48.1 billion text messages sent a month. There are several perceived issues that when you start thinking about engaging with mobile media, creating mobile media for a campaign or for, for an issue, uh, a political issue uh, advocacy. Um, one is screen size. Well, is the size of the screen just too small to really be meaningful to someone? The device capabilities, um, are these really just sort of toys that don't really have enough computing power to really do anything? And I should really be reaching people on their PCs or other places. Um, are the network data speeds just way too low still for this to be a meaningful experience? And who wants to type on a keyword anyway? Is this just text entry just awful? And all of these things are the sort of things I hear when I talk to people about um, the limitations of mobile media. I would say almost none of those are really applicable today. Um, I would say mostly this is, a, this is an older view of what cell phones and what mobile computers are today. And the more accurate view is approximately like this. Um, iPhone entering the market has been a huge change in the handset market, and it's caused uh, everyone else to up their game. And what we're doing is we're looking at a prop sometime probably within the next three months, the iPhone 2 to come out and do the same thing. Um, Apple uh, suggested that it would hit 10 million iPhones basically by the next election, uh, and they are seemingly on track. Some analysts actually predict that it will be more like 14 to 20 million. And what you can see is, especially on iPhones and the competitors' phones that have similar feature sets, that all of the different things that I'll talk about later, the consuming of uh, mobile media skews dramatically higher for users of this phone. That said, there are plenty of actual issues that are real uh, that are currently hindrances to mobile, uh, both from a consumer and from a creator's standpoint. A few that I would suggest are there is a carrier approval process, and many of you building out for web uh, shops, that seems very foreign, but there is definitely a larger running time that you need to do in mobile, and you need to account for the fact that your, your applications tend to need to be approved by about four or five of the major carriers. Um, it's more expensive than subweb technologies are now. And I would say now is the key word there. Um, if you looked at the web when it first began, I would suspect that the, the cost of engaging in the mobile space and the cost of engaging in web technology three, four years ago were probably about equal. Uh, and then lastly, and this is um, both an issue potentially as well as a challenge that some people gravitate towards, uh, it is new untested ground that there are very few rules written now. Um, in many ways, I think the mobile space is probably analogous to the internet pre-Howard Dean where it existed and some people had begun experimenting in the space. It showed progress and it showed potential, but it was still definitely new ground. It was still definitely un uncharted waters. Um, that means, to my mind and many others uh, of similar cohorts, uh, that there's room to make rules and to experiment and to, to create new applications that uh, help make politics more engaging and reaching people in ways that are more compelling that they have not seen. Um, I consider that really a plus, uh, but I can see how it would be considered um, certainly, certainly newer and less certain 
than, than current technologies. So why bother? I would say there's about three reasons. Uh, first, because increasingly that's where the people are. I uh, apologize, we're going to go through a few more stats. I promise not too, too many. So if you look now, um, there are about 255 million mobile subscribers out of a country just over 300 million people. That breaks itself down to approximately 8 out of 10 Americans over the voting age are mobile subscribers. And that could be mobile subscribers writ large. That doesn't necessarily mean they're using mobile media. They could purely be using voice. But when you look at the, the studies further, you see an increasingly meaningful number are using mobile media. So just looking at text messaging uh, for the minute, that's about 58%, uh, 18 to 24-year-olds, uh, who regularly or occasionally use text messaging. Um, and when you look at 25 to 35, that number doesn't change a whole lot. You're still looking at 56%. When you look ethnographically of people who own cell phones, um, you can see that the Latino group uh, is the single largest ethnographic group, followed by African Americans and whites. And I would say that they're also growing in, in the similar tier. So the, the Latino community is the fastest growing group using mobile media, mobile minutes, text messaging, etc. cetera, uh, and African American second. Mixed Asians is actually third and Anglos are fourth. So if you were looking to reach out to a young African American community, young Latino community, in some cases, using text messaging, using other forms of mobile media, might be more relevant than, say, even an email campaign. And then when you look nationally in the US, the number of households that have no landline, that are mobile only, that have truly cut the cord is about 13.5%. Um, increasingly an issue that pollsters are going to have to deal with. And to look a little bit broader, when you look at the next generation, you're going to see this trend just accelerate. So currently, 12 to 14 year olds have approximately 40% mobile phone ownership. Uh, as of 2005, and so it's probably jumped up a little bit since then. Current 15 to 17 year olds are at 75 percent, and 18 year olds are at 73 percent. And when you look at the technology that's in these phones, um, the, this next generation is just going to expect, of course, the phone should have the ability to download games. Of course the phone should be a music player. Of course the phone should have these other features. Why wouldn't it? Uh, so this becomes a very sort of key space, especially when you start targeting out to the next generation of voters. Um, the second reason is that I view mobile as um, really the core of your social network, if you think about it. Even forgetting about the concept of uh, mobile networks literally on your phone, which occurs, and I will talk about in a second. Uh, when you think about the phone, the people that you most influence and that most influence you are is, is in your cell phone. Um, there was a Seinfeld episode where they were fighting over who was on the top of their speed dial, back when speed dial existed, more or less. Um, and, and the symbolism there was um, the people that are on your, that are in your cell phone, that are on your personal device that you carry with you, are the ones that, you, that, are, that are the closest to you, that are the most influential to you, and that you care about most, their opinion, and vice versa. So, so it's very key to think of this as extremely valuable in personal real estate. Um, and the makers of the traditional uh, social networks definitely see that. Facebook, MySpace, etc. are aggressively, aggressively moving into the mobile space. Uh, they all feel that they want the mobile, the idea of a social mobile network to be as um, endemic to your phone as, say, a contact list is today. Um, here's a quote uh, from the C SVP of sales from MySpace. Um, we thought there was demand, significant demand for this and our initial thoughts were confirmed. Our advancement into mobile is one of the key initiatives of MySpace. Extremely key to our growth, a huge opportunity. Uh, and both YouTube and Facebook all have mobile extensions and I think you will see extremely aggressively new and easier to use and um, more compelling applications for all of these major mobile social networks, or all of these major social networks on the mobile platform. And if you just took a snapshot even today, where this is still uh, really a nascent and emerging trend, you could see about 4.1 million people, research have said, uh, are actively using their social networks over mobile. 
So as you think in your campaign of, well, I need, a mo I, need, I need to understand how to best tap Facebook or MySpace or these other services for political cause, political action, uh, that is increasingly going to mesh into whatever mobile strategy you have. It may already be a part of your mobile strategy and you don't even know it. Um, and then the third reason in terms of why bother um, is you should see mobile, in my perspective, you should see mobile as a key bridge from the virtual to the real world. Um, a lot of times people will criticize uh, bloggers or, or online political action as just reaching pe people on their seats at their computer where they're not really on the streets or they're not really engaging in the political process outside of however many clicks they do. Um, I don't agree with that perception, but I, I, I think that the idea of how does that internet action translate into real world activity, uh, the nexus for that is your cell phone. The nexus for that is your mobile communication device. Um, it is literally where the rubber meets the road. And, and increasingly, I think you'll start seeing tools and, um, and uh, tools both for campaigns and, and tools that are just sprung up by the grassroots, helping people to take mobile action wherever they are, helping people canvas better, help, help people do field work better, help people do just day-to-day -day political conversations with friends in interesting ways. Now, um, what I'll do now is sort of talk through, well, where are we today? And what sort of campaigns have already been, been experimenting in the mobile space? We can talk about any of these more in the QA if you like. Um, but certainly on the, on the progressive side, uh, Barack Obama has been, I think, one of, the, uh, one of the most successful and innovative players in this space so far in the presidential campaigns. Uh, both Hillary and John Edwards both had uh, mobile campaigns and both did, did innovative things there. Uh, but I, I, for reasons we can talk about later, feel that, that uh, Brock is in a, a very good case study and actually probably will work on one um, for NPI. Um, you also can see the Ford campaign. Working Assets did a major and I think intriguing voter registration effort uh, and Vote Watch. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, very clearly the Obama campaign. Um, on the conservative side, you can see the Schwarzenegger for governor had a mobile outreach in California compared to it. Uh, Rick Santorum did back in the day, which shows that mobile is no silver bullet. Uh, and GOP mobile had launched uh, uh, the formal effort at the, at the party level to begin engaging with its members through, through text messaging. And then the next two things I'll show you were, in a way, my view is the political as I said before, um, in a way we're pre-Howard Dean in the mobile space, uh, in that there are some examples that are intriguing, but you don't see a hugely and obvious success yet in terms of uh, political practitioners using mobile. Um, you can see, in my opinion, two or three foreshadowing events that kind of show the potential of that. Uh, in Spain in 2004, if you remember, there um, election was, was marred by the, by the terrorists. Um, uh, and what had happened was that the uh, government of Spain had basically legally could not shut down any uh, political action in the two days before the election. So what had happened is uh, consumer, you know, end users, <laughs> uh, the people <laughs> uh, actually began texting each other what they what they think had happened, and if you remember, the government was trying to blame um, the the action uh, not on Al Qaeda, and increasingly, what you saw was this masses of people beginning to gather, uh, saying that's not true, we're being lied to, uh, and when you looked at that, that was almost exclusively driven in Spain by text messaging. Um, when the, after the election, and this is a quote from the International Herald Tribune, they showed that two days before the election, the, the, um, the traffic increased 20% on text messaging networks than it had in a normal you know, election cycle. And the day before, it was 40% higher. And of course, what ended up happening was that the entire the sort of voting universe exceeded you know, 77% above their, which, which you know, was dramatically higher than they had thought, and it, the election went the other way. Um, here is a political cartoon that aired the next weekend, um, and the translation is a bunch of political uh, operatives staring at the t cell phone saying, 
you know, meetings, meetings, interviews, news articles, debates, everything. Nobody, everyone thought about everything except text messaging. And in the United States, the uh, other sort of case study, I think, that sort of shows the on, ongoing potential, the kinetic energy, the energy that is just waiting to become kinetic energy in the mobile space, would be the immigration protests in 2004. Um, there was a bunch of traditional organized massive events, but what I'd point you to specifically were the student protests, which were almost none of them organized traditionally. They were almost completely organized by text messaging, social networks, uh, and, and spread virally. In the white paper on the, the NPI site, uh, I document a bit how this happened, and that you can watch it happening, and you could watch how the protests spread from town to town to town as friends that had friends in other towns would kind of text them, send them links to their Facebook groups, and you would see the action just continue to move on. Um, here's a couple of quotes there. I mean, the kids are inventing a new paradigm. This is sort of like micro grassroots organizing that was never foreseen. And from the Arizona Republic. The school protests likely mark the first appearance of a new generation of activists, savvy about electronic gadgets, text messaging, and the internet to organize. And a quote from one of the students, text messaging is a way of life for us. It's no big deal to use cell phones and communicate. That's what kids do. So here is, um, in a way, a list of things that I would recommend everyone in this room at least think about. Um, initially, getting increasingly conversant with mobile, me mobile media personally. Uh, getting to know it, um, getting to use the different mobile services. Uh, many in this room already have, uh, but there's no, there's no substitute for specifically uh, being a consumer and a user and, a, uh, and understanding how mobile media works. Uh, secondly, I would say begin polling for mobile users. Uh, you, many cases you may be doing polling already, um, you may be asking some internet or other technology questions about how savvy your constituents or target constituents are. Uh, you should definitely ask questions about their use of mobile text messaging, their use of uh, other mobile media. There is, you might be surprised, I suspect you would be, at, at how um, ingrained new media and mobile media are already to the people that you're targeting. Uh, and then the last one, and this one is, is really easy, uh, and should be done, in my opinion, everywhere, actually. Um, which is, as you're already accepting online user information about your, the, the activists that you are trying to reach out to, um, definitely begin also asking about, uh, for their cell phone number, for their uh, permission, for their carrier, and for their permission to text message, even if you don't have an active text message solution happening already. Um, it would be completely understandable for, the, for you to be able to put something there like uh, a checkbox that said, you know, would you like to receive text messages in a future uh, text service that we might be launching? Um, it, it's, there's just, it's just a key piece of data that, that would be uh, very hard to get to sort of go back to the well and get from them again and much, much better to get the first time that they're, they're signing up for your cause or your, your candidate or your uh, effort. Um, and then lastly, or next to lastly, a uh, partner. Um, similar to the internet in early days, the, you will really need to go to a company to help you engage in the mobile space, especially around text messaging, where you need to have sort of an aggregator that connects the content providers to the actual carriers. Um, there's plenty of good companies that, that do this. Uh, a number of them that do this very, very specifically in the political space. We're one of them, but there's a number of very equally good companies out there. Um, it's not something that you can really research and do just on your own. Um, and I would say, lastly, start small. Um, but definitely start. Uh, it, will, it, it is a place where you really will benefit disproportionately by beginning to engage, even in the small ways, and beginning to understand how mobile is a different animal than email or the web. And um, certainly that goes back to the, the original quote um, that's saying that the sooner the, the party that can most quickly engage and master a new technology has this key, key advantage. All right, thanks.